Hello, chemistry students, and welcome to another chapter looking at chemical bonding and molecular structure. Our discussion of structure and bonding begins with small molecules and polyatomic ions and then progresses to larger molecules. From compound to compound, atoms of the same element participate in structure and bonding in predictable ways, which we will see. And then this is going to allow us to develop principles that apply to many different chemical compounds from simple molecules like water to uh, complex molecules like DNA. There's many things to consider looking at what holds atoms in a molecule or ionic compound together. Why are they distributed at strange angles? Why are molecules three-dimensional? Can we predict the structure of a compound and looking at how does the structure relate to chemical and physical properties? When a chemical reaction occurs between two atoms, some of their electrons are reorganizing, are reorganized, resulting in a net attractive force. A chemical bond happens between those atoms. Chemists generally think of bonds as falling into three categories, metallic, covalent, and ionic. But the boundaries between them can be a little indistinct. So in these lectures, we are largely looking at covalent bonds, whereas ionic and metallic bonds will be described later on. Covalent bonds involves a sharing of electrons from each atom's outermost shell, or we call that valence electrons. The outermost shell is valence electrons. So two chlorine atoms, for example, share a pair of electrons. We have chlorine, their outermost shell has seven outermost electrons. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And we see that they share that one and one to make two. So we have an electron pair here that's shared. Ions form when one or more electrons from an atom's outermost shell are transferred from one atom to another, creating a positive or a negative charge or cation or an anion. When we have elemental sodium, Na, with one outermost electron, and chlorine gas, Cl, with one outer, or seven outermost electrons. We can imagine this reaction occurring by the transferring of this one outermost sodium electron to the chlorine, giving this Na a plus charge. And because chlorine is grabbing an electron, it becomes a negatively charged ion. If we look at their electron configurations, sodium, for example, is 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s1. It has a very low ionization energy. That means it readily loses an electron to form Na+. And when I say it loses its outermost electron, that means this 3s1, that one electron, it readily will lose it to become 1s2, 2s2, 2p6. If we think about that, that is neon's electron configuration. So then it becomes Na+. And if we look at chlorine's electron configuration, 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p5, it has a high electron affinity, and it readily gains that electron to form Cl-. And if we look at that, this 3p5 really wants to become 3p6 when it gains that electron to become Cl-. Minus. And that has an electron configuration like argon. That resulting Na plus and Cl minus are attracted to each other by those electrostatic forces. And it is this attraction between oppositely charged ions that constitute the ionic bond. The ions arrange themselves into a crystal lattice where the uh, attractions between the oppositely charged ions are maximized and the repulsions between ions of the same charge are minimized. 
However, for right now, we are focusing on covalent bonds. So not the giving and taking, forming those positive and negative charges. We are looking at electron pair sharing. And again, focusing on the valence electrons, those outermost electrons, and covalent bonds means that we are looking at non-metal to non-metal bonds. Again, if there is a presence of a metal, then it is likely an ionic compound. The electrons in an atom may be categorized as either valence electrons or core electrons. Chemical reactions result in the loss, gain, or rearrangement of valence electrons, those outermost electrons. The core electrons are not involved in bonding or in any kind of chemical reactions. So the core are all of the inner electrons. Valence electrons are the outermost S and P electrons. So that highest energy level, S and P. All electrons in the inner shells are the core electrons. So for example, if we looked at sodium, the core electrons would be 1s2, 2s2, 2p6. The valence electron is that 3s1. If we look at arsenic, if we found it in the periodic table, it's number 33. So we need to get through 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p6. Now we know that after 3p6, we have to 4s2, then go back to 3d10, and then 4p3. However, that 3d10 is involved, notice it still is number 3. The outermost electrons are 4s and 4p. So my valence electrons, there would be 5 valence electrons. Everything from energy levels 1, 2, and 3 are core electrons. Now this is true for all main group elements, elements that are found in groups 1, 2, skip the transitions, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. When we look at the transition elements, the valence electrons for transition elements, we need to include the d orbital that it includes. So for example, if we look at titanium, and if on the periodic table, it is atomic number 22, and it's in the fourth period, and we can see that it in that highest level includes 4s2, but 3d2 as well. So it, titanium has four valence electrons. These are the outermost electrons, and that's true for our uh, transition metals. So our inter core, our core electrons, 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p6. Everything that's argon and below. So if we wanted to write this as AR, everything from here on. And then again, our valence electrons would be 4s2, 3d2. A useful way to represent electrons in the valence shell of an atom was introduced by a guy named Gilbert Newton Lewis. The element symbol represents the atomic nucleus together with all of the core electrons. We then are able to represent valence electrons around the symbol of the element with up to four valence electrons around it, one at a time, around the symbol. And then if any valence electrons remain, they're paired with the ones that are already there. We now refer to this as Lewis electron dot diagrams or Lewis electron dot symbols. If you know the number of electrons in the valence shell, then it's really easy to write out these Lewis dot diagrams. Here's the basic rules. You would write the symbol, treat each side as a box. It can hold up to two electrons, but you only can fill up one per side before you double it up. Don't make pairs unless you need to. For example, lithium. We know lithium is in my first group. Lithium's highest electron is 2s1. 
So it has one outermost electron. We know that, that's review. So we would have one dot. Now it can be on the right, it can be on the left, it can be on the top, it can be on the bottom. Doesn't matter, they're all equivalent. Here are the uh, group A elements. Again, this would be whatever number, S1. So lithium would be 2S1, sodium would be 3S1. Notice they have one dot. Again, that could be on the top, the left, the bottom, the right, whatever. And then we have our 2A, beryllium, magnesium, calcium, strontium. We have two. It can be on the left and the right. It can be on the top and the bottom. It can be on the top and on the right. It doesn't matter. But again, this is our S2. Then we hop over to boron. To get to boron, boron would be 2S2, 2P1. So we count those two S's and one P that has three outermost electrons. One, two, three, same with aluminum, three. Again, that we could have the bottom and the two sides, that would be three electrons. Hop over to four, notice that we have four outermost electrons there, one per side. Then we get to five. Again, nitrogen would be one S2, but that's part of the core of writing the N. It includes the nucleus and one S2. And then we have two S2, two P3. So we count up our S and our P's to have five outermost electrons, one, two, three, four, and then we double up on one side. Doesn't matter which side. Then we get to oxygen with six. So one, two, three, four, double, double. Then seven, then eight. So some structures that you would see, for example, if I had uh, dot H2. We know that each hydrogen has one outermost electron. So when these two hydrogens come together to form this bond to make H2 molecular hydrogen, this is an electron pair bond. It's a covalent bond. They're sharing, they're both nonmetals. We can also write it when I have that bond. This is my electron pair bond. We can see the dot and the dot. And when I write the line, this is a Lewis structure. This is sh just showing the bond, those two electrons. And you can also kind of visualize it that the line has two ends to it. So there is one dot, there's one dot, and they're connected. Now, when I have an example like HF, hydrofluoric acid, again, two nonmetals, uh, hydrogen has one, and we know that fluorine has seven. So we would do fluorine as one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So we can see this here, that is our bond pair. And then around fluorine, notice that we have these that are already paired up from the fluorine. Those are called lone pairs. We can see that there's two, four, six. Six pairs reside on single atoms. So because they're not involved in bonding, they're also called non-bonding electrons. This could also be shown as H, F with six lone pair electrons. And this just kind of re reiterates what we just said. <clears throat> if I just have a hydrogen atom, we know that there's one dot, an H2 molecule. We have each have one dot and therefore joining to share that. We can also show that with a line that's called our Lewis electron dot structure. This also just shows the lone pairs when I have one hydrogen plus the seven Fs that uh, this, where the lone electrons are, that's where the bonding is going to occur. And we can see that right here. This is the bonding electrons or the bond pair, and these are the lone pairs. And notice that we also are following the octet rule. There are two, four, six, eight. We want to get to eight. Eight is stable. And now the only time that we don't follow that octet rule is with hydrogen because we know that hydrogen is 
full with two electrons. Remember, helium only has two electrons in the outermost um, outer valence shell. If we look at the number of bonds that an atom can form, we need to look at well, how many valence electrons does it have? and how many electrons from other atoms are needed to form an octet. Again, remember octet, the only exception here is hydrogen. It has one valence electron, so it wants to form one bond. Chlorine has seven valence electrons, but it only can form one bond with chlorine because that's what gets me to eight. Oxygen has six valence electrons. It can form two bonds. So two covalent bonds. And that might even be a double bond. Nitrogen has five outermost electrons, so to get to eight, it can have three bonds. Again, that could be with one other atom. If it was a triple bond, you can have that would be three bonds. Uh, or it could be with three different hydrogens or three different elements. So, but anyways, it can have three bonds. Carbon, we know, has four valence electrons, so it wants to fill up that octet with four bonds. Now, there's several rules and ways to write or steps in writing Lewis structures. And we're going to need to go back and look at this when we actually have an example in front of us. But we first need to calculate the total number of valence electrons. Now, if it's just a neutral um, structure, then we don't need to go through and add or subtract if it's because it's not a cation or anion. But if it is an anion, we would one add one electron for each negative charge. Because, for example, if we had carbonate, CO3, it's a two negative two charge. So we need to add two electrons. If it's a cation, we subtract one electron for each positive charge. Then we're going to write the skeleton structure. The least electronegative atom occupies the central position. Hydrogen and fluorine occupy outside terminal positions. Place one pair of electrons between those bonded atoms. Complete the octets of the atoms attached to the central atom by adding electron pairs. Count the total number of electrons and then subtract from step one. Place any remaining electrons on the central atom in pairs. If the central atom has fewer electrons than an octet, we need to form double or triple bonds as necessary. Remember, hydrogen atoms will never have lone pairs or multiple bonds because hydrogen only has one valence electron. Then here's a little note about the rules. When you first start to draw them, use the rules, don't skip steps. If you don't skip steps, you will always get the right structure. And then as you get better at drawing them, you'll remember the rules and become a champ at drawing them. You won't need to go back and think step by step. Let's look at an example problem the Lewis structure for NH3. So one, we gotta decide on the central atom. It's generally the atom of lowest affinity for electrons. So it doesn't, um, it's not trying to give away electrons and it's never hydrogen. So N, and it's also usually the atom that's listed first is, nor is usually the central atom. So here N is the central atom. Then we need to count the valence electrons. Hydrogen has one, and there's three of them, so one times three. Nitrogen has five. So there should be five plus three, eight electrons, which is equal to four pairs of electrons. So we're going to draw our N, our nitrogen, as our central atom here. And then we've got three H's surrounding it. Now, if we counted those electrons, so if I were to draw N with one, two, three, four, five electrons, we know that H has, there's three H's and each H has one, so there is a bonded pair right there. Another H has one, that's a bonded pair. And another H has one, that's a bonded pair. So there's three single bonds, also written like this. But that's only one, two, three, four, five, six electrons in those bonds. So we have this up here, this lone pair of electrons on the top of N. So note that N has a share in four pairs or eight electrons. H only shares one pair. Let's look at another example. 
uh, CHCl3. This is from uh, chloroform. Now I need to look at chloroform and count up the valence electrons. Carbon has four, hydrogen has one, chlorine has seven, and there's three chlorines. So three times seven is 21. So 21 plus one plus four is 26 electrons or 13 pairs of electrons. So then we need to go, all right, my central atom is carbon. It even tells us that carbon's my central atom. So I'm gonna write my carbon and then I've got an H and three chlorines. We know carbon can have four bonds because of the four valence electrons that it has. So hydrogen will be one pair, one bonded pair. And that shows as a single bond right here. And then chlorine, there's three chlorines, Cl, Cl, Cl. And that's going to be two, three more bonded pairs. So there would be four single bonds around that carbon. But then remember, we have all of those lone pairs around chlorine because right here, as we draw the dots, that's only one dot for chlorine. But remember, the chlorine has seven valence electrons, one, two, three lone pairs each. So if we look at this, there's three lone pairs around that chlorine, three lone pairs around this chlorine, three lone pairs around that chlorine. So that's two, four, six electrons that are in lone pairs around each chlorine. So that's six, 12, 18 electrons just in lone pairs. And then the four bonds around carbon, four times two is eight. So 18 plus eight is 26 total electrons, which is what we calculated from all those valence electrons. Why don't you try drawing the Lewis electron dot structure for thionyl chloride, SOCl2. That's widely used in organic chemistry. See if you can draw that structure. So pause, do what we did in the last two examples and see if you can. All right, hopefully you gave it a try. Uh, if you think about it, and if you look at the periodic table, sulfur must be our central atom because the electron affinity for, of sulfur is lower than that of both oxygen and chlorine. So let's look at valence electrons. For sulfur, sulfur has six valence electrons. Oxygen also has six valence electrons. And there's chlorine, which has seven, and then there's times two. So if we add all of that up, 14 plus 12 should be 26 valence electrons. And then I've got my sulfur as my central atom. And there's an oxygen, and there's two chlorines. Now, so that has got to be two, three bonds. So 26 electrons means 13 pairs. So if we have 13 pairs of electrons, and we can see that three of them are used for the bond. So 13 minus 3. And remember, we have the octet rule. Let's go back and start putting in our lone pairs of electrons. We know chlorine, one, two, three, four, five, six. So we've got chlorine now has eight total electrons, right? The three lone pairs plus the bond with sulfur. So that's eight for chlorine. We got to have another for up here. That gives that chlorine eight. This oxygen, one, two, three, four, five, six, and then the bond with sulfur is eight. But if we look and we do a count, a count check here, I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24. We're not done because we have 26 electrons that we have to take into account. So with that one pair of electrons that remaining, the central atom 
does not have eight. It's not followed in an octet right now. If we think of our sulfur, we have one, two, three, four, five, six. That's where we're going wrong. We need to have a lone pair for sulfur to give it that oct to give it its octet. So sulfur has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And we now have 26 total electrons using all of those valence electrons. Here's another couple to try. Try drawing the Lewis structures for CH3Cl, which is methyl chloride, H2O2, hydrogen peroxide, that has an, o, an OO bond, and NH2OH with an NO bond. See if you can write those out. Take a second and pause the video and try to work that. Hopefully you got these. We've got my carbon uh, attached with the three hydrogens and that extra chlorine. And if we were to count up all of our valence electrons, this would make sense because carbon has four. Each hydrogen has one, so that would be plus three. And then the chlorine has seven. So that would be a total of 14. And if I look, I've got two, four, six, eight, and then two, four, six, eight plus six is 14. I've taken into account all of the valence electrons, my bonded pairs of electrons and my lone pairs. And then H2O2, again, that told us that we had an OO bond. And so then I would have six for oxygen, six for oxygen, 12, 13, 14. There should be 14 electrons accounted for. And if I have my OO bond, Oxygen we know can have another bond, so that's where my H's come off from. And then to figure out how many lone pairs, we need to go one, two, three, four, five, six. So six electrons are accounted for in the bonds. But there's 14 electrons we need to account for if we, uh, we know that oxygen each has six, six, 12, 13, 14. Um, so we need to have two, four, six, eight electrons and lone pairs around the oxygen. And double check that the octet is being met, of course, except for hydrogen, but oxygen has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. This oxygen has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Octets being met. And then this one is NH2OH, said with an NO band. Again, we would need my N, Having two H's off of it, we know nitrogen can have three bonds, oxygen can have two, and then we need to just put our lone pairs where they need to be with a lone pair on nitrogen and two lone pairs on oxygen. Let's look at a common compound, CO2, carbon dioxide. Our central atom is carbon. It's the one with the least electron affinity. And if I look at thinking my valence electrons, Six and six for oxygen, so 12 plus four, so 16 valence electrons have to be accounted for. All right, so let's take carbon and we're going to bond it to oxygen. So that's one, two, three, four accounted for. That means we have 12 other electrons. So then we start with the lone pairs. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 12 more around that. So when we look at the oxygen, oxygen's happy. It's got two, four, six, eight. Good. We look at this oxygen, two, four, six, eight. Happy. But what's wrong? Yes, we've accounted for all of those electrons, but carbon is not happy. Carbon right now only has one, two, three, four, four electrons. So we need to put some lone pairs after, or after this. We can't have... The, this setup. Since C doesn't have, doesn't have the octet, in order for C to get an octet, we need to make a double bond. So yes, we have all of the electrons. We can't just start adding more bonds because we've accounted for all of them. But what we can do is we can take a lone pair and we can make a double bond to put a double bond right here. And in that case, since oxygen loses that, it's not losing those two electrons though, it's still sharing it with carbon. So this oxygen has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Still has those eight electrons, oxygen's happy. 
And if I do the same thing with this oxygen over here, and I take these two lone pairs and make a double bond here, forming this, oxygen still has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight electrons. And then the beauty of this is that carbon is now also happy because it carbon has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight electrons. So octets being met everywhere. And to double check to make sure that our valence shell or all of our 26 electrons are still being met. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16 electrons. And if we look back here, that's how many valence electrons we had to account for. See if you can write or draw the Lewis structure for carbon monoxide. All right, well, since we only have two atoms here, we've got C and we've got O, we know that we have four valence electrons for carbon and six for oxygen. So we need to account for 10 valence electrons. So one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, five, six. Let's just set it up like this first. We know that this is going to form a bond there. We want these two to form a bond here. And we've got a lone pair of electrons over here. We can put these two that are by themselves. We're going to pair those two up since they're kind of loners. I'm going to erase those. Put them over here. And then we've got this. If I were to think about, actually, let's look at where we're at before I even did that. I just made that one pair. Okay. So this means we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. But I don't, but I have some that aren't bonded. And carbon right now is not happy. It doesn't have eight. One, two, three, four, five. And oxygen isn't happy. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So how do we get everybody happy with an octet? Well, we need to join forces here. That helps. Carbon now has one, two, three, four, five, six. Oxygen still needs two more. So it's going to take two of oxygens here and make that into a bond. So it'll look like this. CO. Now we have triple bond. We still have the lone pairs over here. So let's look at carbon now. Is it happy? We have carbon with one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Carbon's happy with eight. And oxygen also has those three bonds, two, four, six, and this lone pair, seven, eight. Let's just double check. That we still have our 10 electrons. Two plus six plus two should be 10. How about another example here from maldehyde, CH2O? So we have one carbon, two H's, and an O. There's going to be 12 electrons available. And again, remember, everybody wants to have octet except for these H's. Carbon is the least electronegative, and we know that hydrogen can only form one bond, so we've got carbon in the middle here. It's going to bond with those two H's and that O, so that takes two, four, six electrons. By placing those three bonds, that takes two, four, six, so now we have six available. Again, remember, everybody wants to have eight. So let's add another bond for oxygen to give carbon its one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That makes carbon happy. Now oxygen still isn't happy yet because oxygen right now only has one, two, three, four. Five, six, seven, eight. Add two more lone pairs. So oxygen's happy, carbon's happy, hydrogen has two, so it's like helium. And we've used one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, 
9, 10, 11, 12 electrons. We can also do the Lewis structures for ions. So we're going to do the chlorate ion, ClO3 minus, and the nitronium ion, NO2 plus. We're going to do the same thing, except the added step is for an anion, we need to add the number of electrons. So for example, for ClO3, we would need to look at seven valence electrons for chlorine plus each oxygen is six. So six times three, 18 plus one because it's minus one. So this would give us eight, seven plus one is eight, 16, 26 electrons for ClO3. So then if we write this and go, okay, well, chlorine is listed first. It's also the um, less electronegative. So I would have my chlorine, my three oxygens. Let's look at chlorine and chlorine right now has one, two, three, four, five, six. So it needs two more. So a lone pair, eight. This oxygen only has one, two. So it needs three, four, five, six, seven, eight. The bottom oxygen, same. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Now let's see if we have 26 or 13 pair. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. 10, 11, 12. And I missed this one down here, 13. There you go. So we've got CL with a lone pair up on it. Three bonds with oxygens. Each oxygen has three sets of lone pairs. And then the way that we would just notate this is we put brackets around it and then we would raise it to the negative one power. Nice work. Let's try it for NO2 plus. We know that nitrogen has five valence electrons. Each oxygen has six, so six times two would be 12. And then this tells me, or excuse me, I guess, 12 plus five is 17, minus one is 16, which is 17 minus one. So we need 16 electrons that we need to account for. So we have N and then an O and then an O. And again, it doesn't matter if your O is down or your O is up or whatever the orientation is. Nature does like symmetry. So it would typically be look something like this and be linear, whether that's up and down or side to side. All right, so right now nitrogen has one, two, three, four. Oxygen, we know oxygen is going to have one, two, three, four, five, six around it. One, two, three, four, five, six. Now let's see where we're at. We've got six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And by doing this, I have 16 electrons. Two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16. All right, we've got all of our electrons accounted for, but what's wrong? Nitrogen is not happy, it does not have eight. So we need to give nitrogen eight. Right now, one, two, three, four, let's give it two more, five, six, and then let's give this oxygen seven, eight. So if we were to rewrite this, this N will be double bonded to the O, and it will have two lone pairs, and this N is double bonded to the O, and it has two lone pairs. So now we can just double check. Oxygen has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Nitrogen in the middle, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. This oxygen, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Everybody is happy. And then I just need to notate it that it's a plus one ion. 
why don't you try these structures for ammonia, NH4, NO plus, and SO4, 2 minus. So pause the video and we'll check back in in a second. All right, hopefully you have these, something that look like these, with nitrogen in the center, one, two, three, four hydrogen surrounding it, and a plus charge. So that would give me, nitrogen would normally have five, six, seven, eight, nine, so there'd be nine valence electrons, minus one, eight, and therefore two, four, six, eight, eight electrons. NO plus, we would see that there's just an N and an O, and nitrogen has five and oxygen has six, so that'd be 11 minus one would be 10. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten 10 electrons total. And in order for everybody to be happy, there needs to be a triple bond between the N and the O. And then SO4, two minus should look like this. How about this? Which one of these is the correct Lewis structure. This one, we'll call this A, we'll call the one to the right of it B, this one C, and this one D. Take a second, pause the video. Hopefully you found that it was this one. Phosphorus, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Phosphorus is happy with eight. Each hydrogen has two. If I did my math, phosphorus should have five valence electrons, each hydrogen one, so six, seven, eight. So eight total electrons, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. If we looked at the others, we could find fault with it. Nitrogen should have five, uh, six, seven, eight. So eight total electrons here. I don't know why I did five and eight. It should be eight total. And there's only one, two, three, four, five, six electrons accounted for. If this was going to be right, there would need to be lone pairs above nitrogen because nitrogen only has six right now. If we looked at the oxygen and hydrogen, oxygen should have six and two H's. So that'd be eight. And right now I only see one, two, three, four electrons accounted for. Now I wouldn't want to just start off and do double bonds to do that because then I'd be violating hydrogen and hydrogen would now have four. One, two, three, four. Hydrogen can't have four. So my other option here, and I got to look at this and go, well, oxygen only has one, two, three, four. It needs more electrons in order to have that octet. So that's where I would go, give oxygen lone pairs. One, two, three, four. So now oxygen is one, two, three, four in lone pairs, five, six, seven, eight in bonds. Now everybody's happy. And if I look at this option, yes, H is good. H should have one and fluorine should have seven. So a total of eight. And right now there's only one, two, three, four, five, six. We would need another set of lone pairs on F. How about this one? Which of the following is not a correct Lewis dot structure? Take your time and think and look and see who's all happy. Should have gotten this one. If I look at this central nitrogen, it's got a triple bond, so two, four, six, and then a double bond, eight, ten. That's ten electrons for that central nitrogen. Not going to happen. What about this? Which one is not a correct Lewis dot structure? And hopefully you've got this answer. Uh, if I looked at nitrogen, which is five valence electrons, oxygen, which is six, so that's 11, plus the negative, that would be 12. And I would have two, four, six, eight, ten. There's only 10 electrons accounted for in this drawing. Right? Three double bonds, so that's two, two, and two, so six. Seven, eight, nine, ten. We need twelve. How about this one? Take a second, pause the video.
and we would see that sulfur would have six. Each oxygen is also six, six, 12, 18. So 18 and six is 24. Let's see what we have. Two, four, six around each oxygen. Six, 12, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24. All right, we've got 24. Let's see what our problem is. All right, we've got each oxygen is happy. It's got six plus the two, so eight, eight, eight. Ah, the problem is with our sulfur. Sulfur only has three bonds attached to it, and so it does not have eight. One of these would need to be a double bond in order for sulfur to be happy and have an octet. How about this? Try drawing the Lewis electron dot structures for carbon tetrafluoride and or I'm sorry, carbon tetrachloride and NF3. Hopefully you came up with this. If I looked at carbon, you know carbon has four outermost electrons, each chlorine is seven, seven, 14, 20, and 28, plus four is 32. So if I look to find 32 electrons, uh, each, car well, this carbon is happy because there's four bonds and there's two electrons in each. So there's eight electrons just around carbon. So it is met its octet. Each chlorine has three lone pairs, which is six plus the bond of carbon. So that's eight. So we have eight, 16, 24, 32. And for the NF3, nitrogen we know is five. Each fluorine is seven, seven, 14, 21 plus five. So we need 26 to be accounted for. And let's see, we know that there's three bonds with F. Fluorine's gonna want seven, one, two, three, four, five, six, plus the bond to nitrogen, so that's happy. This fluorine is now happy as it has two, four, six, plus the bond to nitrogen, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, plus the bond of nitrogen is eight. Let's count this. So I've got eight, 16, 24, but I need 26. And if I look at nitrogen, nitrogen is not happy yet because it only has two, four, six. It hasn't met its octet. So we need that lone pair above nitrogen. Now it's met its octet. Next, I want you to try drawing these structures from methanol, CH3OH, an hydroxylamine, H2NOH, and in each molecule, the central carbon or nitrogen atom is bonded to hydrogen atoms and one oxygen atom. So see if you can mess with that. Again, add up your total valence electrons. Make sure everybody's happy with the octet except for the hydrogen. They want to. Let's look and see how to get started here. It told me that for methanol, CH3OH, that the central carbon is bonded to H atoms and one oxygen. So there's my CH3, and it told me that it was bonded to an O, and so then I have one more H left. That O also must be bonded to an H. Now let's do our electron count. Each hydrogen we know is one, so one, two, three, four for hydrogens, four for carbon, six for oxygen, so four plus four is eight, plus six, 14 total. All right, that is, there's a six in there too. Okay, so right now we have two, four, six, eight, ten. 10. We need two more electron pairs to make everybody happy. Let's see who's happy. These H's are happy because there's two, 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 and two. All the H's are happy. So now we gotta see is carbon happy. Carbon has, I'm gonna change colors here so we can look at carbon. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Carbon's happy. Oxygen must be the culprit for not being full. Oxygen only has right now one, two, three, four. It needs five, six, seven, eight. That would be our last four electrons. So now everybody is following octet rule. 
All of the valence electrons have been accounted for, and we are done for methanol. This is methanol structure. How about you try hydroxylamine? We have nitrogen, and there's two H's attached to it. Again, it doesn't matter if these are going up or down or left to right. doesn't matter. Two H's attached to my N. It told me that my N was attached to an O. And there's an H attached to that O. Now let's look at our electron count. Let's change color here. My hydrogens are happy. Two for that hydrogen, two for that hydrogen, two for that hydrogen. Okay. My nitrogen. We know nitrogen as, well, let's, let, actually, I'm going to rewind here. Nitrogen, we know five valence. Each hydrogen is one, so that's plus another three. Oxygen, six. So six, seven, eight, nine should be 14 electrons that we are accounting for. And now there's two, four, six, eight. Okay. Nitrogen. If I look at nitrogen, it has one, two, three, four, five, six. Nitrogen's not happy. It needs two. That gives nitrogen eight. And let's look at oxygen. Let's change to a highlighter here. One, two, three, four. Oxygen only has four. So it needs five, six, seven, eight. Now let's do an atom count. Two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen. That gives me my 14 electrons. And I know this got really sloppy, but I have my nitrogen with two hydrogen bonds coming off of it in a lone pair. Nitrogen is also attached, one bonded to oxygen, two lone pairs on that oxygen, which is bonded to the hydrogen. And finishing out this section, we're looking at isoelectronic species. And it, Pretty much ISO means the same, electronic means number of electrons. So for example, if I looked at this compound right here, and if I said, okay, nitrogen we know has five valence electrons, oxygen has six, so it's 11, but it's charged plus one, so that means I need to subtract one. So we would have 10. All right, and then if I looked at two nitrogens, triple bonded together. Again, I would look at nitrogen and know that that has five times two, which is 10. And carbon, which is four, oxygen is six, so four plus six is 10. And a carbon and a nitrogen, so we've got four plus five is nine, but then it's a negative one charge, so plus one, 10. So notice that all of these compounds look pretty similar, however, still have their different nuances that are, make them different, but notice that molecules and ions that have the same number of valence electrons and similar Lewis structures are said to be isoelectronic.